Good morning and welcome to our webinar on working better with procurement. My name is Joyce Kelso and I am an Associate Director at the IPA. I'm delighted we have such a good turnout and also from a range of disciplines, both within agencies and clients. It's a subject we hear a lot about and we tend to hear more about bad practice, bad practice rather than good. So we're here to put that right. We do recognise that the relationship between procurement, marketing and their agencies isn't always as good as it could be. But we're a people business and like any relationship, it works best if there's open and clear communication between everyone. So myself, together with Tina Fregent, brought together a working party from the IPA and SIPS. And SIPS is a Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply, in case you didn't know. And we opened up the dialogue about how we can all work better together. The result is a set of top 10 tips where agencies share what they need from procurement and vice versa. Easy to get your head around, they are 10 clear guidelines on what we need from each other relevant to people that are new to the role or those that have been in it for a while. So talking of what works best, we brought together a panel of experts to tell us their story and what they've learned along the way. We're delighted to have joining us today, Zoe Trimble, Head of Marketing at LucasAid Energy, Louise Dean, Marketing Procurement Category Manager at Centauri, and Charlotte Wolfenden, Managing Partner from Adam and Eve. Charlotte's very kindly stepped in to replace Tammy, who unfortunately can't join us today. So thank you very much for that, Charlotte. This is the team that not only led the pitch last year, but have worked together from day one and put in place working practices that they found benefit both sides incredibly well. Our panel discussion has been led by Tina from Tina Fregent Consulting, who also has a wealth of experience and working on both sides of the fence. There'll be plenty of opportunity to ask questions to the panel, not just about this particular brand, but about procurement in general. So please type them into the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen and we'll pick them up as we go along. The handy set of tips for procurement, marketing and agencies will be sent out after the webinar and I hope you'll find them useful and share amongst your teams. So enough from me, over to Tina. Thanks Joyce, hi everyone. Um, we we'll get going then. So uh, Zoe, can you talk us through why you decided to get a pitch for a new creative agency uh, for the Lucas A brand? Yeah, great. Morning, everybody. So we were lucky really that Lucas A was actually in a pretty strong position, which is often not the case with pitches. So, you know, we were growing, but there was a bubbling brand equity challenge. So the question was really like, how do we go from good, good to great? So we were at a cross point where we were really reviewing the whole loose age strategy and what's the right growth model as we move forward. And we'd also been with our previous agency for 10 years. So it was really just a good point for us to go out, look, explore, not just the kind of people and the talent, but actually um, new agency models as well. And particularly because we have Ted, who is our internal creative agency. So the overall aim of the pitch was really around driving this long-term strategic planning that executed in a really kind of creative, agile way and really about delivering this kind of sustainable growth. So the, the key thing for us was really looking for a collaborative relationship and obviously demonstration of great creative as well. And I think something we talked about a lot was creative height versus necessarily this is the ad that we're going to buy. It was really around looking at an agency that could really demonstrate that they had kind of great creative ability that fitted well with, with the brand. So I suppose just to say it, it, was, it was a great opportunity and I felt really lucky actually to go out and meet all these great agencies and these great minds and really talking about your brand. It was really inspiring. And so I'd say kind of enjoy that as a process as well. It was really great great um experience that's great to hear like that you use the word lucky i think that's yeah that's mm. people don't often use that do they but i think yeah like I said, it's a pleasure to go out and learn and and meet new agencies and lou when did you get involved from a procurement point of view right from the very beginning on this one um it was great to be um involved in the whole um process so um right before we even started um, talking to any agencies or we even started the pitch um, I was involved to help the team to define how we were going to select the agency, what we were going to do, 
um, all the different briefing stages that we included within that so yeah the very 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 beginning um, so yeah it was it was great to have that full visibility of the whole project and to actually from a procurement perspective really have um, a really good input in into that so that it meant that I could then actually kind of affect the outcome in a, hopefully in a positive way from a procurement perspective as well yeah, brilliant. And I understand that you use the AER for uh, a mm -hmm. long list in the chemistry meetings. Yep. Was that useful from, a, from your point of view? Yeah, it really was. They gave us um, some really good support in those early stages. So they helped us um, to define who was going to be on our um, well, our longer shortlist. And then we went went to the to their offices and had a really, really, uh, really detailed um, session where we looked at all of those agencies and narrowed it down to the eight we took through to the chemistry sessions so for me their knowledge in that area is is absolutely amazing and it's something that really you know I can't really replicate into that level of detail myself you know I'm from a quite a small procurement team so we have a limited amount of resource available to do these kind of things so using the AAR for their knowledge at that stage was really really great and then um, after the kind of chemistry stages they took more of a backseat they were still involved in the process in the background but took more of a back seat because we really wanted to build the relationship ourselves with the agency, not go through an intermediary. So yeah. when it came to then being at the meetings, even giving the bad news to the unsuccessful agencies, we did all of that ourselves. We felt it was important from our point of view to have that relationship directly. Yeah, brilliant. And Charlotte, from, your, from the agency point of view, do you have a preference on who approaches you about a potential pitch? Is it marketing? Is it procurement? Is it a search consultant? Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I mean, the honest answer would be no. We're, we're often just glad to be approached and, and asked. Um, and I think we understand that different brands and clients will ultimately have different in-house resources, different governance, different processes. So every pitch is likely to be different. Um, I think the key for us is that we really understand who the key stakeholders in the pitch process will be mm. and that we understand that they're all totally aligned on the objectives of the pitch um, and ultimately that the reason for the pitch is really clearly defined we'd always expect marketing to have a fundamental role within the pitch and within decision making um, ultimately you know they're, they're uh, very closely um, linked to the brand objectives and also um, I, I think that they're the day-to-day -day contacts. They're the people that you, you, you pick up the phone to and ultimately, you know, that's where the chemistry needs to lie. We obviously also um, find procurement's involvement invaluable because they offer a different dimension, a different form of evaluation that I think gives a rigor um, and a methodology to, to something that's quite intangible. I think, you know, our creative output is is hard to uh, define sometimes. And I think there's, there's a bit of logic applied to the magic, which I think ultimately helps, helps everyone. Um, and then finally, in terms of pitch consultants, um, we're very, you know, very used to um, being approached by um, search consultants. And, and as Lou said, they offer a consistency, a reassuring presence, a, a kind of sounding board for both agency and client. And if, if we were to have a preference, that would probably be, um, the way we'd like to be contacted. Um, they're incredibly experienced and, and do more pitches than any of us do. So, um, yeah, I think that would be our answer. What's your view of, sort of a, a well run, like the Ducasade pitches versus, you know, you hear these stories, these procurement price dead pitches? Um, you know, what, what's your view on, on, on those? I think um, it's funny, we were talk, talking about this yesterday. It, it, it's not to say that a, a price led pitch is a bad pitch it's just that we absolutely need to know that that is the defining criteria at, at, at the beginning of the process and it it feels actually in our experience that that's that's quite rare it will often be a va you know it's value it's not necessarily pure pricing um but i think that ultimately what makes a good pitch is like i touched on before a really clear brief a really clear team a really clear process and I think if we know that right from the beginning and as an agency can evaluate the opportunity, the scale of that opportunity and whether we're, you know, best place to, to deliver on that. I think that's that's ultimately what what makes a good pitch. Sometimes it's good to say no, isn't it? I think. Yeah. And I, and I think that's it. It's having all the information right from the beginning so that we can make an informed opinion with all the disciplines within our agency as to whether 
um, it's something that we we really feel like we can go after because you know as everyone knows pitches are an investment and they they take a lot of time they take a lot of energy and we we as an agency have to believe that it's it's something that we really want to back and really want to, to go for. Great thank you. So in Lou how did you run the briefing process I believe you held it in your office? Yeah shall I talk a bit about I suppose, mm -hmm. the objective and Lou can perhaps um, talk a bit more about what, what we did um, and I suppose like any kind of pitch and briefing we just wanted to give a really clear compelling brief and get people excited about LucasAid and also excited about LRS as a business as well and just give them a taste of what it would actually be like working with us as well um, and also we were really keen in the pitch but also throughout the process to make sure that it was a fair process as well so decided that the best approach would be to brief all agencies together so it's fair because all given the same information and also meant that we could get people involved in one session. So we had Carol, who's the CEO, that could come in and talk to everybody. Um, whereas we wouldn't be able to do that if we were going into you know, different offices or in, um, several different agencies. Mm. So it gave us that chance for the fairness piece. But then what we did was um, did breakout rooms so that people could ask questions because fans, no surprise in the big briefing, when you then like, any questions? It was like, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, no, no response. So it gives that opportunity to actually then get to know each other a bit more and have those kind of one-to-one -one conversations and ask the questions that, you know, fair enough, you don't want to ask in front of, you know, the, the whole group. So I don't know if Lou, you want to say a bit more about who was, who was involved in, in the day? Yeah. So we, um, yeah, like, like Zoe said, we invited all the agencies in for an all agency briefing and in, that in itself was quite fascinating just to watch the agencies interact mm -hmm. with each other as well. So, um, so that it was, it was a really positive day. Um, so we split, obviously, we had the all agency briefing together, first of all, and then we split, obviously, the agencies off. Um, each agency had a chaperone who was another member um, of the Lucas A team who was taking them round to the different areas. And we had then what we called speed dating. Right. So we different rooms set up um, with different people in them so that each of the agencies could then meet. So we had a legal and procurement room. The we best had, room, of course. Yeah, the best <laughs> one. Everybody really enjoyed that room. Um, <laughs> and then we had um, the TED team, which is the internal creative agency. So they met with them. We took them into our laboratory and got them to taste some different R&D samples. Um, and then we had other sessions with other members of the Lucas A team so they could really meet the full gambit of, of all the people they, they would potentially be working with and then have the opportunity to ask, you know, more questions that they didn't want to ask in front of um, the other agencies. And then in the procurement room, I did a, a, a procurement briefing to them of what, you know, what I was expecting um, in response to, to my part of the brief to give them a bit more guidance and a bit more um, information. Um, and then we got everybody back together at the end of the day, um, end of the morning, and then um, to do a, just a wrap up session um, and then sent everybody on their way with a little goodie bag full of some Lucas Aid products and obviously everything on a memory stick. Um, and then I think the nice thing we did after that was we kind of had um, unlimited access. So we didn't have a specific Q&A session. We just gave the agencies unlimited access to all of the, anyone that they'd met, basically all the people so that they could ask as many questions as possible. And that was something we hadn't really done before on a pitch, um, but we really wanted to try to replicate as much as we could, what it would be like to work with us. And we wanted to understand what it would be like to work with the agencies on a day-to-day -day basis. So we felt that doing that um, and having unlimited access would, would be the best way to assess that. Um, and it worked really well. We were a little bit nervous to start with that we'd be overwhelmed with um, requests and questions. Yeah. But it, it was manageable. It was, it was okay in the end. Yeah, yeah it was brilliant. good. And it worked really well. Yeah, thank you. Charlotte, what do you think of those all agency briefings? Oh, I'm, I'm quite a fan of them, actually. And as oh. Lou and Zoe said, we love seeing all the agencies <laughs> in the same room and the body language and what they say and what they don't say. It's, um, I mean, we just embrace any chance to hear the brief talked about in person by by the people that know the brand inside out and it's they often end up feeling a little bit like school trips because you <laughs> get your whole pitch team together you trundle off to the offices you're usually half an hour early um, <laughs> you kind of all you know you're all on your best behavior um they're usually you know incredibly immersive they're very much on home turf so you, you get a real sense of of the culture you get to meet 
you know, as, as the team said, you get to meet people that you probably wouldn't normally meet yeah. um, who will give you a different perspective on, on the business and the brand. Um, and they, they feel fair and they feel reassuring that you're ultimately all hearing the same, you're all hearing the same thing from the beginning. Um, there's obviously always an element of competition and I think eyeing up your competition and, and getting that adrenaline and it feeling like a reality is, is really important. You know, that yeah. it's a competitive environment and I think we, we all embrace that. Um, yeah. I think this, the slight downside more so for, for Zoe and Lee would be that, as they said, you, you potentially don't necessarily get the most insightful questions from your agency in a public forum or you you might not get a sense of personality and, and chemistry but you know that's um I think I think the way that the Lucas A pitch worked was it, it took on both it had the big group briefing and it had the small the small meetings to acknowledge that but um yeah we love them they're, they're part of the process part of the fun and how do you at what stage do you involve other other disciplines in the agency so finance or posing to do at what stage did you do that Shara? so we from day from day one really um it's kind of what i touched on earlier in that we you know traditionally a, a, a brief would likely come to new business but then very quickly we'd have all our disciplines in the agency come together to to evaluate evaluate the brief so we'd have our finance director um, kind of put his lens on it. We would have account management set set the trains running to work out, you know, both long term and short term. Can we resource this? Can we can we deliver this? Um, and then ultimately, actually, we we would we would get our executive creative director involved. We'd get we'd get our strategy directors involved because it, it is a collective evaluation as to whether this is right in the same way that that Lou and Zoe would evaluate an, a um, an agency we would evaluate the brief in, in the same way as to the opportunity and and whether it's right for us and something the agency can can really get behind yeah thank you yeah, and, and Nick the I met the finance guy Nick at one of the very early stages before the pitch was complete so I'd already started to build a relationship with him um before we even got to the negotiation stage so once we did get to that stage you know it was a it was an easy conversation really it was you know we'd both been speaking many times before so mm -hmm. it just made that process a lot slicker um, once we had got to that point it enables yeah. everybody in each discipline to focus on their element of the, mm -hmm. the and it's quite freeing and quite liberating actually when when you know that someone else's eye is on this element and, and we can focus on this element and collectively you know you get to the right answer yeah thank you so how did you decide who attended the pitch and who the decision makers were because like everyone always wants to go to the pitch don't they yeah and um in terms of actually who went to it we wanted to make sure that we had a representative sample of those who would actually be working directly with the agency so we had good kind of brand management representation from senior brand manager to marketing director procurement and head our internal agency because that's a key kind of relationship to build as move forward and the key thing was really it was those who could make the time commitment as well because I think you know we've talked about um, how we approached and it it does take a lot of time yeah. so I think we were really conscious we wanted to keep the size controlled and keep the decision making number small um, and also kind of obvious thing to say but really important to have the key decision maker in in the room as well um, and have consistency so if you attended one tissue session of an agency you know need to therefore attend the others to be able to evaluate it kind of kind of fairly really so and as, as Lou said just so again we set out that we wouldn't restrict access so agencies could reach out at any point so it we really felt that that therefore gave agencies their best shot and we could therefore see the best from those agencies and you know I think sometimes a conversation after a meeting can really help kind of clarify a situation as you would in the real world so trying to replicate that in a pitch process we found was really um, valuable so I think the way that we approached it was there was quite a, quite a few groups that were set up but interlinked so we had a core pitch group that there was four of us that were in every meeting so that was kind of brand team and procurement we then had an extended pitch group there was seven of us which it extended it to include ted include ireland and include the marketing director from a total lrs point of view and they attended 
the key kind of pitch responses. So really acted as a really good kind of consult and input into this kind of core group of four that were ultimately the decision makers. And then beyond that, there's obviously a much broader team that work with the agency and also need to be comfortable with the agency that, that we select. So there was the, um, the senior brand manager who led the pitch project team also um, essentially had a broader group of people that was kind of key stakeholders in the wider business and kept them at speed with the process where we were with the decision making and also um, ensured that we were keeping key stakeholders aligned along the way and, and looped in, into the process. Um, so I think by, by this way, having these kind of interdependent groups, it meant that we could keep the decision making small. So we did have four that were the key decision makers and it meant that we kept timings to track and we didn't actually have any delays to the process either because we were able to kind of keep the wider group involved along, along that process as well. That's great, thank you. Lou, you went from, I think you mentioned 16 agencies in the beginning, mm -hmm. four on the pitch. How did that mm -hmm. process go? Uh, yeah, it went, it went very smoothly, to be honest. Um, we probably started off with more than 16, but it was like 16 was the first kind of, right, this is the, these are the agencies we're looking at. And that was the part that AAR helped us with. Uh, we actually went into their office and had um, post-its on the wall that had yes, no, and maybe. And we'd reviewed all of the videos and the information and we were like moving post-its around. And that was quite a, it was quite a fun meeting to kind of have a really good discussion about all the different agencies. So that got us down to the eight that we took through to the chemistry sessions. Um, so then we went to the offices of all of those, those eight agencies over two days. They were very, two in, very intense days. Um, and I've seen one of the questions come through in the, um, the Q&A actually. And we actually, yes, we had scorecards at each stage of the process. So um, all of the members that attended from our side had a scorecard to fill in after each of those sessions. So, you know, I guess from my point of view and to what Charlotte was saying earlier, it's like kind of adding the logic to the magic so that we were trying to make the intangible tangible by having a scoring process throughout the, um, all the different stages. And yes, we shared all of those scorecards and all of the criteria with the agencies in advance so they knew exactly what they were being scored on. Um, we even had at the chemistry stage a cake rating, which um, cake and refreshments, but obviously we didn't actually take that into it. I love that one. Cakes are very Pets important. as well. Wasn't it cute dogs <laughs> got a bonus point as well? <laughs> yes, cute dogs too. Um, so yes, yeah, so each stage we had eight at the chemistry stage. Um, after that, um, we used obviously the results from the scorecards and got it down to four. And actually, it was very clear who our four were. Once you took all the scores into account and we did a bit of, um, I did a bit of spreadsheet number crunching, it was really clear who the four were going to be to take through to the final pitch stage. That's the four that then came into the office for the all agency briefing. Um, we then went back to their offices for the final presentations, um, which we then got to two and we still couldn't decide between the two which one was going to be um, our partner. So then they had, we had like a, and an extra round of tissue session and then a final presentation um, and again scorecards at each each of those phases to kind of build the story and have our kind of not audit trail that's not the right word but at least we could see our decision making process along the way as to why agencies were, were ruled out at each stage and actually that process which is really useful um, was when we were giving the unsuccessful agencies feedback, we had some really tangible things that we could say, you didn't score so well in this area. This is you know, where we would have liked to have seen improvement, that kind of thing. So it really helped us with that part of the process too. Yeah. So Wendy just asked about, you mentioned videos, where you saw mm -hmm. the videos, I think that's the AER reels, isn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So they've got, yeah, they've got a whole, they've got a reel from each of the agencies that they've almost got in their kind of register. And they show, yeah, they showed us the those videos from, from all of those agencies to, yeah. get, to get an additional insight into, you know, the culture of those agencies. And I, think I wouldn't great, underestimate, right? um, I was just going to say, actually, I wouldn't underestimate the role of those as well. Like it really did give you a, a flavor for those agencies and yeah. quite often the things that you liked were things that you liked continuing kind of throughout it as well yeah, yeah. and websites i think agencies sometimes under you know the people look at agency websites uh, and the generic contact form yeah my, my, my bugbear when you just like send it to a generic <laughs> person but you know all those things help don't they she said sort of get, get yeah. the agency yeah 
And the final thing we did when we um, and actually announced to Adam and Eve that they'd been successful was we, we did it in person. We went down to their office. Um, Zoe, Zoe had a cake. We had champagne and balloons and we actually went to their office and made the announcement to them in person as well. So that was that was very fun. And, you know, we gave a real kind of human element to it as well. You know, everybody in the agency came down to reception to uh, to celebrate with us. And to, it was a it was a really great moment to really yeah. kick the relationship off. Yeah, great way of doing it. Charlotte, from your point of view, did you feel the how did you feel the, the pitch went? Any funny stories, any disasters <laughs> you want to share with the audience? I mean, it would sound incredibly cheesy, but it was it was such an amazing pitch. And I think, as Zoe said, we felt we just felt really lucky to to even be able to have a chance to spend any amount of time working on on the brand. Um, it we were probably fueled by quite a lot of Lucasay throughout the pitch process. <laughs> which meant that, uh, energy levels were, were were high even at three in the morning. Um, but it was one of those it was one of those pitches where every a member of the agency had a perspective, had a point of view, had interacted with the brand at some point. Um, and so we were able to get everyone involved, which was great, which meant things like our videos to introduce the team and our videos to kind of show, um, show what our agency was like without the team having actually visited yet, were just really, really fun and everyone wanted to be involved. We were doing the three peak challenge at the time and we were doing marathons and bike rides and so we loaded them up with Lucas Aid and made some little uh, videos and films around that. Um, horror stories, I think there was a moment in a pitch where none of our paper stuck on the wall. <laughs> it was just really unfortunate um, and a bit clumsy, our CEO having to stand on a chair and, and hold, hold things up, all a bit scrappy. Um, we talked about Kate's, we had a moment late night before before one of the meetings where we decided it would be a really good idea to divide the skittles into different colours oh, and to, to see the colours of Lucas Aid and some poor person had to uh, divide those into bowls but it wasn't remembered and it was noticed. Yeah we noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly added to the list and then I think the, the other moment we talk about the cake um, we often, you know, never assume what answer we're going to get during a pitch. And so I think it was a Friday afternoon and we weren't necessarily sure if an answer was coming. And so when we, we heard that something might be happening to um, get lots of people that were dispersed around different parts of London very quickly back to the office um, was, and it was a really hot day, I think, from, from what I remember, uh, was just quite, um, quite adrenaline fuel, let's say, but it was brilliant and it was a really great Friday. Um, and great, and great for Zoe and Lou to do it in person as well. I mean, that's it's the best part of a pitch process, I always think. Yeah, good news. It's great. Yeah. You get your Simon Cowell, you made it moment. Yeah. <laughs> Except that the high waisted trousers, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's re I think it's really important for the agency as well because there's so many people that have touched the pitch in some way that you might not necessarily meet within the meetings and for them to actually see you know yeah. see the reality of, of being told that all the hard work's worth it is is just really really important that's a really good point especially the support the support staff you know your the receptionist you know the wonderful people you've got to do <laughs> it is all those people that feel part of it then isn't it and say yeah we all did this it's, it's great and you must know Adam and Eve is exceptional as well. Fernando, is that his name? Fernando. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> he was very excited. Great. <laughs> 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 coffee man. Excited. <laughs> he's the guy that does the coffee, the coffee, is he? He welcomes everyone in reception. He, he's brilliant. He knew all our names the first time we turned up there without, without having met us before. So that was quite a personal touch as well. <laughs> That's really, really good. So um, what worked well from the process? Lou, from your point of view, anything that sort of stood out? Um, I think as Zoe touched on, like, I think the fact that we, we had enough time to do it. So we weren't, we, weren't, we weren't trying to rush through the process to get to the end. So, you know, we, we also didn't drag our heels and, and drag it out. I think the time we gave it was, the, was a good amount of time, enough time for agencies to respond in a, in a detailed, robust way, but also to keep the momentum going throughout the process. Yeah. Um, the fact that at the beginning we had like our core core team and that those people dedicated their time and were available for all of the key points, I think that was really important to have the the availability of the people um, for the meetings because it is you know pitching is labour intensive you know it it takes a lot of time to do it thoroughly and well so to have the dedication of those people and everybody was really engaged in it. Um, 
and it was a fun process like like at the very beginning zoe said she felt very lucky to be meeting all of these really creative agencies and people and i think we all did it was a it was a really fun process to be involved with so i think if you can have some fun along the way you know it, it makes that process um, it makes that process obviously more enjoyable so I think that was good and having um, AAR in the background really helped so we were able to bounce ideas off them um, you know we made we we made the decisions that's you know that's a hundred percent it was all our, our all our decisions but they did give us some very good kind of um, advice and guidance they kind of facilitated some conversations when we were a bit stuck in how to move forward um so that that worked really well as well and i think like we said having the having the scorecard process along the way as well um really helped um direct our decision making so again that for me was another thing that really really worked well in the process yeah. so from your point of view yeah the, the only thing i would add in versus what we've talked about is um actually keeping it simple as well of um I think, you know, we were thinking about at some points so if we've got the M4 signed, do we take that over and say we're looking for an agency? You know, do we do some fun kind of really fun kind of chemistry ideas? And actually it was, we decided not to, and it's the right thing, you know, in terms of not trying to be too different for the sake of it. And I think it's being authentic to you, you know, and how actually you would work as, as, a, as a business. So I think just, um, yeah, keep keeping it authentic to, how, how you would actually kind of work with them moving, moving forward. Right. And Charlotte, from your point of view, it worked really well. I think we really like the, the balance of um, kind of a formal structure and a formal process, which there absolutely was, but also the permission to have direct contact if we needed to. We had WhatsApp groups, we had kind of impromptu calls to clarify things. And I think that really helped us keep momentum in between the key milestones um, and help you know helped us give a sense of who we are and how we work and the the way that we solve problems so i think that was really good those whatsapp groups are still going um, <laughs> but, um so yeah i think it will be those two things and also just knowing from the beginning that one one of the key cri criteria was that this was about finding an enduring long-term relationship and partnership that ultimately would be about how compatible we are as teams and I think knowing that at the beginning again just gives you permission to to be yourself and to just mm -hmm. you know throw, throw throw the real the real Adam and Eve into it so that um you know you, you've given it your best shot as you and and if that's not right then fine but but if it is right then at least you you know and then you've kind of been selected for the right reasons knowing yeah. that that's that there'll be no surprises. Yeah, and that's a good point. Just before we go to the, the Q&A, we've got quite a few questions coming. I just want to ask you about post pitch because, you know, a lot of people, you know, we do the pitch and then, you know, okay, everyone goes and does their separate things and gets on with it. So post pitch, I think, you know, is, is really important. So Lou, you know, what have you done post pitch to build the procurement relationship with Adam and Eve? So um, immediately post pitch, um, we had um, immersion sessions for Adam and Eve to meet again, meet for a second time mostly, and um, the people that they had, we had at the briefing sessions. Um, so I had a, a session with the guys in terms of procurement um, and what, what I expect um, from the procurement and agency relationship. Um, we went through some of the the quite boring stuff around SAP and how, you know, how we need to process invoices and all that kind of thing. Um, but also as well we got the contract out of the way quite quickly yeah. so we um, engaged with the legal teams or got the legal teams talking to make sure that we had all of that in place um, quite quickly so that it didn't you know then kind of drag on and impinge on the relationship we wanted to get it all tied up um, as soon as we could um, and again had some really good conversations to set up kind of um, an SRM process um, with the team so that we can monitor performance going forward um, you know how well we think the relationship's going that kind of thing um, we have had one meeting but obviously Covid kind of kicked in we obviously we'd normally do those these kind of things face to face and it's kind of the ongoing building the relationship thing so we've had one virtual um, SRM review meeting um, yeah um and we're yeah we're just thinking about when and how to do the next one um you know given the situation and, and how we should we should do that maybe we need to do it differently we're not sure but yeah it's about having an ongoing dialogue as well and being um being available for each other when you need yeah. to be 
Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's so far where it's working well. Right. Thank you. And Zoe, you mentioned it takes time to build a relationship and how, so how have you done that from the marketing point of view in the last year? Yeah. And I think the first thing was, um, we knew it was about building this, um, collaborative kind of relationship. And so really needed to put time in to build that and knew that up front, that's the kind of critical time to kind of build those foundations. So I think there's a few things that worked really well, which was time as a core working team. So we had a few sessions really early on about how do we want to work together and what are the things that you like and dislike about client agency relationships. And from that, we pulled together essentially a charter and a manifesto about how we want to kind of hold ourselves to account and and that manifesto has really helped actually setting in the direction of how we want to work and not just the core group that were involved initially in the pitch, but actually, you know, the, the wider teams now so that it's kind of quite a clear expectation across the whole marketing team, the whole agency team and also interagency as well, which um, was really important about trying to get um, you know, all of our agencies work, working together. And then mapped out an induction programme. So Lee talked about procurement, but essentially the agency spent loads of time with our insight team, our regulatory team, our other agencies and essentially mapped out a program over this kind of few months of who do they need to meet and um, how do we kind of build that kind of relationship and really understand the business and and it comes back to um, I suppose we had a bit of a gift of time really on it but at the same time we kind of planned it like that as well that we didn't need to jump straight into creative um we had time to actually build a relationship before then we needed to kind of get get out there and kind of get working on it specifically which i know quite often you don't always have that kind of luxury but it it really meant that we took that time initially which has really you know helped insane i can't believe it's kind of nearly a year ago now and i think you know it's um it really has built a really solid foundations and you know we have tricky conversations as as you know you all do but i think we can really approach those in you know in, in the right way that's great, thank you. And Charlotte, we know we use the words open arms and transparent relationships, and I think both Zoe and Lou have used the word partnership as well. You know, what do you think is the key to a long successful relationship between the agency and, and the clients, both marketing and procurement? I, I think it's 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 all about honesty and, and trust ultimately, and I think that trust goes in, in two ways. Um, I think as Zoe said, the most important time is often those first few weeks after the pitch where you're all on a high, you've all made, oh, yeah. made this big decision, but it, it's those moments where you have to sit down and, and work out how are we going to do this together. Um, so we, had, as Zoe said, we had this session where we got everybody in the room, different members of our team, different members of, of Zoe's team, and we just had post-its. And it was almost it was a bit like a counselling session to, mm -hmm. to kind of go, right, what, what do you like about this? What might you like about this kind of way of working? And we, we went through everything from how do you like to be contacted? How do we like creative work to be, to, to be discussed? Um, how often do we want to socialise? Like it was, it was every mm. part of the relationship and, and it, and what came to the surface was quite a lot of kind of shared principles that we we pulled together in, in a, we call it a, a manif team manifesto. And it was, it just has really helped formalise um, what we'd all been talking about, because you can talk a lot of, you know, open openness and transparency, but you kind of need to put some KPIs behind that as well, or it's very hard to to know what it translates to. So we, yeah, we have 10 principles that we um, have anyone that joins the team is inducted into those and we kind of hold ourselves up to them and it's been a really good, good start. Um, I think what we were saying is if, you know, lockdown came pretty much kind of six months into our relationship and if we hadn't done all of that hard, hard work at the beginning, I think maybe, you know, there would have been different challenges, but we've, um, no, it's been, it's been brilliant. That's great. Well, thank you all three of you for answering those questions. I'll now hand over to Joyce, who's got the hard task of wading through all the questions <laughs> um, yeah. in the next sort of 15 minutes. There's quite a few actually, um, and some uh, directed really towards the beginning of the process, um, which I just wanted to ask, if there was one for Louise. Did you set a clear budget in your pitch brief uh, for agency fees and ongoing production? Mm -hmm. um, 
and set that out right at the very beginning? No, we didn't set a budget in as part of the um, as part of the brief. But what we did do was give a very clear scope of well, a, a fairly clear scope of work on what our expectations were. So we didn't actually know how many campaigns we we're going to produce in the first year or first mm-hmm. uh, you know couple of years or anything. But in order to compare the agencies as much like for like as possible, we asked them to provide um, their their quotes based on um, our can't remember exactly what we put in there I think it was um, one TV campaign that was going to be like a 30 second commercial that had outdoor so we gave them like a brief in terms of the scope and then we also said um, we need to have you know obviously campaign planning for the following year um, and the kind of the account management side of things tried to be as specific as we could in terms of our expectations so that's what we gave to the agencies in order for them to quote against now the fees we finally agreed for the year are different to that but we wanted to be able to um get the agencies to you know have a, as much um like for like apples with apples as we could um so that was how we approached it um and then obviously based on that you know we've got the rate cards we've got the agreed rates we've got a, an idea of you know how much resource they'd allocate to different types of activities so we then we then use that to build um, how we've we've negotiated the actual fees and the actual activities but yeah for the for the purposes of the pitch and being able to compare the agencies against each other mm. we we gave quite a tight brief in terms of our expectations great thank you um one of the other questions that came up was how did you manage the questions for um from the agencies did you share the questions and all the answers with everybody or did you just keep it to the agencies that asked Oh, I'll, I mean, I'll take, I'll take this one if you like. It depends on what they were. Um, mm-hmm. We turned to get case by case. If it was almost like a tissue session question where they were asking for feedback on, on an idea or were they going in the right direction with the creative, then obviously that's specific to that agency. Yeah. If it was something they were asking, so can we have, I don't know, your brand tracking data for the last three years or something, then that got shared with all of the agencies so that one agency wasn't at an advantage for having that information. So it did depend on what the requests and what the questions were as to whether it was shared back with all of the agencies or not. Great. Um, There's a couple of questions about contracts, which I think we probably hold a more um, detailed session on contracts, but there's one, um, do you include acceptance of your company's standard contract in your scoring criteria? Um, we don't have a standard contract um, at LRS. We don't have a standard template that we use, so um, we we couldn't include that. Um, but um, it's something our, our legal team are working on, and in the future we might do. Um, but I don't think we'd ever say, you know, if you don't accept these terms, you can't work with us. I think what we normally do is to ask an agency if we do have the terms to redline it and to get you know to give us feedback on the bits they don't agree with so at least we can then understand which bits they do and don't can't can and can't accept and which bits are up for negotiation as well because you know contracts are are negotiated terms of contracts are negotiated as, as well as the commercial side of things too so so for us we wouldn't ever make it mandatory that they have to sign our t's and c's but if we have got them available we'd ask them for feedback great um and there was there's obviously quite a bit about now pitching remotely uh so one of the questions was the pictures pre-covid do you still think you would have gone out to pitch virtually in today's world because obviously things have changed quite a lot in the last year i I think we we would have done um i think given kind of where we were in terms of um the strategic kind of need and the need for creative and the the time element of it was a good opportunity for us to go out and look as well because we knew that we didn't need to develop a campaign like this year that we had kind of this year's kind of build build on that so i think we would have probably kind of gone ahead with that and given like i said we've been with a previous agency kind of 10 years there were lots of things that kind of lined up that were really kind of crazy that right environment i mean i think it would definitely be trickier, I imagine. I don't know, Charlotte can probably say a bit more about what it's like kind of pitching in, in um, at this time. I imagine it's um, yeah, quite quite a challenge, but I, from from a loop same point of view, if we'd have been in that situation, I think we would have would have gone ahead, yeah. 
We're, we're actually running a pitch on one of the other brands in the European portfolio at the moment um, on Schweppes. So, you know, we, we are doing that. We are still, we are still pitching under, under COVID conditions. Any tips you want to share, Lou? Um, it has been more of a challenge, to be honest, obviously, because you can't meet face to face. Um, but we are having, again, it, you know, it, it's all, it's all um, video conference based. Um, but we're still, you know, we're still, we're still doing a chemistry session. We're still um, doing briefing sessions with the agencies. So, um, yeah, we're just replicating kind of the same stages that we would have in a real life situation, but having to do them virtually. Um, obviously, you know, we, we've come up against a few te technological issues when, you know, the, the online calls haven't gone quite as caught according to plan. Um, and you just have to be patient with that. Um, but yeah, the, the, is the, the process so far, it feels like it's going, feels like it's going well. We're still in quite the early stages, but, um, but yeah, we're, we're going ahead. So it's, it's good. I mean, Charlotte, you've just won corn. That was all virtual, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it, it's kind of, it, it goes back to, to what we were saying earlier in that it now more than ever, I hate saying that term, but now more than ever, the, the brief need, you know, needs to be super clear and, because there's there's almost no no room for for um, time inefficiencies in this world that we're in now that we we as an agency have got to to know the question that we're answering. I think we become very creative both in terms of of the answer to the brief, but also in terms of how how we present the work, how we introduce the team. Mm. I think what we're really conscious of when pitching is that it's really hard for for brands to get a sense of us as an agency if they don't visit our office or they they mm. you know it gives a lot away um of a culture so i think we we work really hard to try and make up for that um there's probably a lot more rehearsal time <laughs> agency yeah. side because of all the tech tech challenges um but ultimately we're you know we're trying to solve the same problems it's just the way that we then present them and communicate them is is a little more challenging but you know there's always a way and, and I suppose there's a, there's a couple of questions on how long the process took. So where, how long did it take from beginning to end? Um, it's about four months from beginning to end. And, but that includes all the initial kind of research at, at one end and that right until the very, very final decision. Um, so, yeah, we, we started in um, at the very end of July and we were complete by kind of the end of November. And do you think that's now being speeded up because we're doing things remotely? Is it condensing that that period, or do you tend tend to try and keep it the same? Um, I mean, we're on the Schweppes one. I think we're, we're aiming to get it done in about three months, but that's just timing wise because we've got a campaign. So, like Zoe said, we had the luxury of not having a campaign that we were like driving yes. to yeah. the hit hit. But with the, the Schweppes one, we do. So that's why we've got like a, a hard end date on that one. Um, but no, we're still trying to give as much time as possible. You know, it's really important for the agencies ha to have a good, a good enough amount of time to respond to a creative brief so that, you know, you get, you get a better response once they've had a, I feel, a decent amount of time to, to respond to it. And it's only fair, you know, you don't want the people at the agency working weekends if they, you know, if they don't have to. We don't want to kind of instill that kind of, that, those kind of bad behaviours into the relationship. We yeah. want to that we're being fair to the agency too so great and um, we've probably got time for just a couple more one was what's the view on retainers that interested in charlotte and louise's point of view on that lou do you want to start um, yeah so you know so we we have we've agreed a, it's a retainer approach um so yeah i mean we're comfortable working working with retainers um obviously what we agreed was again before the covid situation kicked in so you know it's we're working in a different way now but the but that's still in place but i think it's again this is the thing about having an open and honest relationship and dialogue if things are changing so you have your retainer in place if things are changing significantly you talk about it and you need to understand whether you know are we are we being too demanding of the agency um, in that case, you know, we, we may need to relook at it. And, you know, it's kind of at the end of the first year, let's sit, sit down, let's see how that's gone for the year. Um, 
um, yeah, it's, it's about open, honest conversation for me so that we can really kind of understand where the pinch points are for the agency as well. Because it might be a process thing if, you know, the agency saying, oh, we're over burning by, you know, 30% on this. Let's have a look at why. Is that because processes at your end aren't efficient? Processes at our end? What can we do together to make sure that, you know, we can rectify that in the second half of the year and things like that? So, yeah, for me, it's just it's just having that dialogue and talking about it. I think from our point of view, re retainers, it, it, it depends on, on what's required. So sometimes retainers are the most suitable answer. Sometimes they, they may not be, depending on the scope. I think what a retainer gives, gives us as an agency is, is um, almost a sense of a, a long-term commitment and, a, and a, a long-term plan, but also a bit of flexibility, as, as mm. Lee said, if things are changing. Um, even small changes, I think, with a retainer model, we can look at what's within that retainer and make make tweaks, make changes, make things that um, can make us a bit more reactive, I think, if yeah. you have a retainer in place. Um, but it, it, it totally depends on on what's required and, and the way that we, we want the partnership to work. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I mean, a lot of... I think a lot of people do recognise that a long-term relationship is a, is a good one. Um, so I just, just, I'll make this a final question, actually. Um, what are the uh, top three things you're expecting from an agency to deliver against from a procurement point of view? So if it's three things um, from an agency point of view, what would that be? Um, just three. Um, <laughs> no, I think, um, I think, being open and honest with me you know having that trust in the relationship is a really important thing for me so like you said you know if there is something that we need to change and need to do differently I would I would hope that I've built enough a good enough relationship with the agency that they feel that they can come to me and have those conversations yeah. um so trust for me is a really key thing um yeah transparency definitely um i know we've we've mentioned that word quite a lot of times now but it you know for a procurement person transparency is really important um you know we need to feel as well that you know if you're presenting uh you know a, a fee proposal or something like that we need to feel that we're be being given all of the information um you know we need to feel that, that that information is correct and you know again it links back to trust as well so if if i feel that you know i'm, if I'm happy that the transparency is there then i'm going to trust and, and work more closely with the uh, with the the agency partner um the third thing um great cakes at a meeting obviously <laughs> is really important uh, <laughs> no i joke um i wasn't but... that one in lieu <laughs> I know cakes are really important um but yeah I think you know have being fun to work with for me as well is you know it's I, I love doing agency pitches and I love working with the agencies when the relationship's going well it's really really positive and everybody gets a lot out of it it's easy to work with um so yeah so I and I guess being engaged with procurement and mm. keeping me involved I think is a key thing too so you know when you're having maybe an agency day with the marketing guys invite me as well because then I can you know I can see what's happening with the relationship I can see if the relationship's going well or not um, and then it's easier to kind of preempt and be proactive about you know when we do our um, our quarterly reviews or our six monthly reviews I've got a much better understanding of how the relationship's working if I've been involved at various different touch points so I would say yeah invo involving procurement in the process as well not just during the pitch but ongoing is is for me a really key thing yeah anyone else want to add to that as a sort of take out trust transparency fun including cake uh seems <laughs> to be the order of the day um the only one i i would add is um beyond obviously the what's of an agency of great strategy great creative yeah. um is actually being in your business as well and really you know understanding what your challenges are right now, how we're facing into them. I think, you know, Charlotte and I have often had a conversation about just what is the conversation that's going on right now? And particularly, you know, with, um, you know, in light of the current situation as well is, you know, it's changing daily, <laughs> weekly. And so I think having that open conversation about, you know, we are facing challenges on budgets at points, but then there's points you're like, we need to get out there as a brand. And so it's just really, you know, getting in the business and understanding that. 
Great. I think we, we massively value that as well because it is though, it's that question that I'm sure I've probably asked you is what, what's keeping you up at night this week? And it's often, it's often not the, the thing on the status report or the thing that, you know, we're all going at a million miles an hour. It, it could be something, you know, that's bubbling or that's, that's not quite um, been communicated yet. So yeah, those, those conversations we have are really important. Great. Well, thank you very much. We're sort of um, running out of time now. There's been lots of questions, which is great. Most of which we've tried to answer, but I think we really see this as a beginning of sort of open uh, communication between the procurement uh, teams and also uh, marketing and agency. So what we're going to do is as we move forward, if there's more um, webinars that are of interest, I think we can also look at some of the more detailed stuff like how to get the best contract. But please keep in touch and we'll look at the rest of the questions that we haven't had time to answer today because we are very engaged um, between the two communities and it's a great place to be. So we will send out to everybody the tips that we've prepared. We hope that they are really relevant and useful, not only to you, but uh, to share with your teams. Um, certainly from the procurement point of view, there's lots of uh, procurement people that are coming in and working with agencies for the first time. So what we want to make sure is that they are well versed in how it's very different to work with the uh, with an agency and the, and the comms community that is from maybe some of the experience they've had in the past and vice versa. So um, we'd be delighted to keep the dialogue going and um, keep in touch with me, Joyce at ipa.co.uk. Um, I'd like to thank the panel very much. Um, and I think it's been a really worthwhile session. We'd very much value your feedback. If there's anything um, that you'd like more, you'd like us to investigate, um, that would be great. So on, we'll be hosting the top 10 tips on our website and also on the SIPS website as well. So um, please share and we'll continue the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.